up gamers? I am Mike the Zorch, and this is the Inside Star Citizen edition of Zorch Reacts. And today's episode is Whole of a Show. This is a uh, newest video. I've actually pre-watched this with Tiger Con before, but I'm gonna try to react to it as if I had not seen it before. Not a big in-depth uh, video today. In a little bit of a view, we're gonna get a little bit of a glimpse of what we're gonna get in 317, the next patch coming up, um, and some detail. And I've got some, you know, comments to add along the way. So let's uh, jump right into the video then. Ah, uh, the hole. We've been waiting a long time for this. It is right now. Loading cargo is a very been in concept for a long mechanic. time. You go to a terminal, you click buy, bam, it pops up on your ship. Yeah. But that is changing in the near future. Yeah, that'll be the cargo repactor. It's become an actual physical loading process. So having externally mounted cargo for the whole series will be a, a big benefit for players. Hmm. The Misk whole it's... series is. Go back. Very much the similar similar design to the Prospector on the outside, with the sort of domish look to the cockpit here. Uh this back here looks actually this looks a little bit like the free freelancer, but without the weapons mounted to it. So oh, it's a little bit of DNA from a whole bunch of MISC ships on this. The MISC hull series is a lineup of ships uh, purely designed to carry cargo from point A to B. And the lineup consists of five ships, the hull A being the... Yeah, one thing that's been taking them the longest time is figuring out how to get this to work. Because what happens here is when this opens up, this... this, this expand open like an umbrella like the rod on an umbrella and then these arms fold out and these arms hold the cargo and instead of faking it what they want to do is they want these arms to actually fold in and then the whole ship to be able to be able to close and then collapse instead of them faking it they want it to actually work and they've been testing some things to try and make that work with ships with moving parts, with that the moving parts on like the Nomad's Ladder and, and different things and, and unique landing gear on different ships. They've been testing ideas to try and make it work. And it looks like they've, they've succeeded with this. This is the whole A. And I think this is the C or B. No, no, no. This is this is the A. This is the B. C, D, and E. Yeah. This is the A, the B, the C, the D, and the E. And if they can get one to work, they should be able to get them all to work. Where they go together without without colliding with their hitboxes colliding each other and closing up. It's gonna be complex. They didn't want to cheat it. They didn't want to, like a lot of other games would do. All right. Smallest and the hully being the largest. As you progress up the sizes, you move into larger quantities going longer mm -hmm. distances. Yeah. And then you use the smaller ships in the series to do the short range of long distance e cargo hauling. A is the only one that can actually land on the, the when is carrying. The entry into yeah. both the whole series and the sort of dedicated cargo hauling profession. It's the only one that can it land holding cargo. For getting cargo on and off the ship mm -hmm. as quick as possible. But so all the cargo is external. It is the best size to amount of cargo ship in the game for new players wanting to get into it and it is really a one person you and your cargo ship i were to make a good starter ship it has flexibility that some of the larger whole series ships 
don't have, such as the fact it can be fully loaded and land planet side or in yep. hangars or in pads with the other ones cargo. can't the other ones have to dock with the space station you've got everything on board for you to live out in the verse and deliver your cargo you have a very traditional misc cockpit layout you have a that big dashboard very much like with the all freelancer the buttons, switches and controls not quite as restrictive view as the freelancer but it is very much styled in the same mm -hmm. influence as a lot of the misc ships Moving back, you then have the hybrid component airlock room where okay. the bulk of the components are, as well as the entry into the ship, which is a side ladder. Oh no. When that door opens, same ladder as the, the uh, prospector EDA, murder ladder. Sealed, so it doesn't vent to anyone <laughs> in the bridge or anyone in the living quarters, which is the room immediately behind that. I think they that. fixed that. There you have your bed, you have your basic food making facilities. Mm -hmm. And then at the very rear of the ship, you have a small bathroom area, which has Wet the bath. classic toilet-shower combo and sink. The hull A is releasing before the cargo refactor comes out, so it's still going to function as a cargo ship. Um, but a lot of its benefits will be unlocked over time as the cargo refactor comes in and is iterated upon. And it will just get a much stronger and stronger choice of cargo ship. People have been wanting the whole series in game for a long time, and with the release of the A, that's a reality now. I got that down really it's been good. Great to get this out there, and it's helped us prove out some of the issues that have prevented the whole C from coming out. Looking forward oh, yeah, to the whole C got that. That's, the that's and been in for the whole C. Whole C that has been in concept forever. The whole A is making its small but impactful debut in the upcoming Alpha Three Seventeen and will continue to grow into its intended role in the persisting universe as the cargo refactor comes online and continues to iterate in subsequent patches. And Jared's getting ready for his move. His, his More of his helmets are packed away. The set's supposed to change over time. Either, either he's already moved, and he's just putting his set back together, or he's packing his set away, and he's getting ready to move because he's going to London. And up next, it's time for a special locations-based sprint report, so let's get to it. Okay. Let's start things off this week with a look Ooh. at current progress on cloudscaping. I didn't get to see this Thursday. up close. I was sitting on Tiger's bed when I was looking at this. Explorations and taking the pipeline you've seen demonstrated before completely the out cloud of tech over Hurston. and into Houdini entirely, potentially allowing for an increase in simulation data and better shaping than we had previously. Nice. Oh, that's gonna now, look at this good. Point, it's still too early to say if these will make it uh, yeah, Alpha that, that needs work. or require another quarter to bake, as it were. But as with all things Star Citizen, this refinement of existing yeah, processes will get that better needs and work. faster results once it's all properly dialed in and approved. And while we're on Hurston, let's take a quick look around Maria Pure of Heart, the hospital hmm. coming to Lauraville in the upcoming Alpha 317. Oh, those are those triangle light formations from the uh, starport. That definitely looks like the business sector of version. All the hospitals business we've seen sector so far, this one architecture. May be my favorite. Combining the severe architecture and attitudes of Hurston with the benevolent yeah. purpose and ideology of a hospital is yielding a truly unique visual experience, and I'm here for it. Definitely the architecture is like the business center. Moving higher in Hurston. up and much farther out. Let's check in with some pyro system. Let's call it space box for lack of a better term, <laughs> development. Now this potential background for all adventures in pyro is coming along nicely with pipeline improvements yielding stars and subtly different shapes and hues and cloud formations designed to hook in and support those you'll actually be flying through. Mm. And it all makes for a nice contrast with this planet and its blue atmosphere you can see here. And then down on the planets, when the exposure changes at night or at sunset or whatnot, you can see the hues and forms change Damn. appropriately, which is super cool. That's going to look cool. This game's going to look stunning. Beyond that, the team is also creating some large-scale space points of interest in the pyro system. Things that can act like checkpoints, as it were, before you enter certain hmm. gas pockets approaching outlaw stations. Now, like white box phase, this is early days, just blocking out shapes. And 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 before anybody freaks out, the Bengal you see here is just to show the proper <laughs> scale read. 
<laughs> in other words, that As thing's going to be big. Go, they'll get things like final geometry and lights to flesh out the experience further. But it's already shaping up to be a dramatically different Damn. experience than traveling through the Stanton system. And while we're in Pyro, let's take a look at the Yucca Brevifolia, our hmm. outer space version of the Joshua Tree. Trees are hard to do in games. Most, when most um, companies make games, when they make trees, they'll rely on some third party tool in order to generate them. Like, there's a tool called Speed Tree that a lot of Unreal and Unity developers use. There, there's a variety of other ones, but trees are hard to get right. And when you don't get them right, you notice easily. Now you might be saying to yourself, it's just a tree. Well, yeah, but I thought it looked really cool. So yeah. you have to look at it for a bit. If you don't get it right, you get the, it, it, it breaks the immersion. And I really like the dry bark on the tree. That looks like a good scene. This game's gonna look awesome. And back up in space, the props team is continuing their work building a whole new array of run down, beat up, customized and unique items for the pyro system to help sell <laughs> a very different experience for life in outlaw space. Just really cool stuff. And I want to shout out Joseph, Lewis, Thomas, Dan, Stephane, Sophie, and the rest of the team for some exceptional work making things not look good. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. And look at these trash piles. Hmm. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's and New also... York City. And disgusting. Oh, look, another scene of New York City. Of course, some of these outlaw stations will have run-down space glinks aboard, so the team at Montreal have been beating those up a bit. <laughs> I don't want to go there. And I'm going to take this opportunity to remind some folks that not all outlaws are filthy, disgusting slops. Just the ones that hang around in Pyro. <laughs> you fancy outlaws out there with your this is out while drinking radagast from a teacup <laughs> may want to make your homes in another system. this is just cig letting us know yeah, we're Finally, working on let's pyro take another look at the continuing development of colonialism outposts including these new liquid storage tanks some new light fixtures oh Wells. Oh, well. And new garden modules. Hmm. You know it's the future because of hexagons. <laughs> then from one outpost type to Ooh. another, another look at Hello. white box explorations of derelict outposts. Huh. Now, like all then. white box phases, it's an important step in oh, identifying abandoned which outposts, areas huh? are likely to become traversal nightmares and may want to be adjusted for gameplay reasons uh, before we move on to final art. Yeah. Line. But overall, these derelict outposts are another opportunity for stories and missions to be told across Pyro's planets and moons. Cool. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the whole A is ready to make its mark on the persistent universe that the cloud tech pipeline continues to be refined and updated as we saw in Hurston, and that Pyro continues to shape up to be an experience unlike any currently available in the Stanton system. Now, don't forget that Stella Fortuna is just around the corner. Keep an eye out on the robertspaceindustries.com website for details. For Inside Star what Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next time. Gonna week. have to check that out. Well, Hmm. Well, the whole series ships, those have been in concept for quite a long time. I mean, a really long time. And so what took a what what's been taking so long with them is getting those arms that hold the cargo to fold together properly. As I said before, they don't want to fake it. They want to fake as little as they can in this game. Because a lot of other games, 
they mostly fake stuff whenever they do anything like elevators are loading screens you know the the if, like in um insomniacs spider-man when you're riding on the subway it's a loading screen you know um they don't want any of that because in Star Citizen, when you're on an elevator, you're actually in the end of the elevator. The elevator is actually moving. Although they do fake it slightly, we found out, Tiger and I found out that the elevators don't really actually travel through an elevator shaft. They'll fly through space. They will fake that, but the elevator is actually a physical environment in the game world that's moving and moving your character train the same way but the train actually does travel on the track it doesn't just go flying invisibly through space so the trains are real physical things that are traveling through the game world so they don't they don't when they don't want to fake a lot of things things that that they can fake if they're like out of view a lot of a lot of times they will um not many and then, um, you know, the last last bit was just basically them telling us, hey, we're working on Pyro. Because Stanton's nearly finished. All they have to do, all they're doing right now is just refining a lot of the tech that they've been working on these past several years, getting everything ready. Stanton's system has basically been their Petri dish of testing ideas, testing um, their tech more getting their tech working the cloud tech the planet generation tech now they're they're um we're getting a river getting one river for now and then they'll be adding more and the time's come for them to start really adding star systems and pyro is they pyro has to really wow people i think they they understand this and so that's why they're working on it so hard. They can't put a lot of resources into it at the moment because one, they're still working on Squadron 42. They need to get that out the door so they can get some revenue other than ship sales. And, and then they have um, all these other star systems they have to build. They're gonna launch with a hundred star systems or they say they want to launch with a hundred star systems so they have to get a hundred star systems ready and they can't take another 10 20 years doing that with the current pace that they're at they are going to have to devote more resources to actually getting those star systems built at least three three and a a uh, uh, three or more a year. And so that's why they have that new office in, in Canada um, that they brought on for creating star systems. And once they get Squadron 42 out the door, they'll be able to take those people and move them to just pumping out content, pumping out star systems, so they can get this game ready, get it out the door. And if, if they can do that, maybe five years. Because if they don't launch with 100 star systems, then the damn main media and, and all their, all the, the stupid detractors that have been calling this game a scam over the years, are just going to point and say, see, we told you so. You know, they've been working hard. They've, there's actually been improvements to this game. They've actually been improving things. Like the, the 30k errors, those are virtually gone. The server, servers have been way more stable now. And there's been a lot more additions to the game. You know, new, new ships. In great improvements to the planets uh, the you know uh, Crusader has been a great addition Orison has been a great addition to the game and you know there's been progress 
you know, have they been perfect? Has has everything gone you know perfectly the plan for them? No. That's that's how development is. That's how game development is. Anyway, I am getting off track here. This has been the latest Inside Star Citizen, and I'm gonna I'm keeping up with it this time. Anyway, I will see you for the next one next week. We'll see what Jared will have for us and what his set will look like in the future. Anyway, I've been Mike the Zorch. If you like this video, consider subscribing and click the bell icon so you will get notifications of new videos. And also don't forget to check out the Gamers Bay community on MeWe. MeWe is a social media platform that does not sell your data, doesn't run ads or, or collect any user data. Oh, see you next time.